So let's talk about special tests. Um, the difficulty with special tests and TOS is that there's a high rate of false positives. So they're not great tests to do. It is definitely recommended that we do a cluster of special tests. We have to do multiple special tests um, in order to help us determine if this is definitely a, a TOS problem. So the, the Gillard cluster, um, researched back in 2001, there are two to three positive tests will have a better sensitivity rate of 90%. And just a, a reminder that a test result means basically there's an increased sensitivity of the nervous system. It does not tell us necessarily where the compromised site is. So the ADSEN special test is one that we'll go over. So to perform this test, you're gonna um, take your patient's arm, palpate that radial pulse, abduct it to about 30 degrees and um, kind of keep it uh, in a little bit extended position. You're gonna have your patient um, extend their head back and then rotate to that same side. And you're gonna hold this position, um, to have, to have them take a breath in and hold their breath, and you're gonna hold it for 10 seconds. They're gonna hold their breath for 10 seconds, and I'm feeling the pulse. Any diminished pulse or absent pulse or a reproduction of their symptoms would be a positive test. You can breathe out. Wright's hyperabduction is another test um, that we should be performing. It's a, it's a two-step test. Again, we're gonna feel that radial pulse, and the first part is we're gonna um, abduct the arm to about 90 degrees, externally rotate, elbows flexed about 45 degrees, keeping the head straight for this one, we're gonna feel the quality of the pulse. Um, if there's no changes to the pulse here, then we are going to hyperabduct the arm. So bring it all the way up and over their head. And again, feel that, feel the quality of their pulse. We, we will be in this position for up to one minute and see if there's a diminished pulse or reproduction of symptoms that would indicate a positive test. Next one's the elevated arm stress test or the Roos test. So for this one, you're gonna have the patient bring both arms up to uh, 90 degrees abduction, 90 degrees elbow, bent, um, elbow flexion, and 90 degrees external rotation, and then have them slowly open their hands continuously for three minutes. Um, and again, you are looking mainly for symptom reproduction here. So if, they, if any of their symptoms that they came in with gets worsened, then this is a positive test. Um, so a couple other special tests that we wanna look at is upper limb tension testing. So this, this one is to bias the median nerve here. Um, so we're gonna have the patient um, lying supine. We're gonna bring the arm up to about 90 degrees depress the scapula down a little bit, and then fully extend the fingers and, and wrist and fingers and thumb here. And then we will slowly extend the elbow and see if symptoms get reproduced. We can compare this to the other side to determine um, if one has more mobility versus the other side. So to bias the radial nerve, uh, where again, the patient will be supine. We're gonna depress the scapula a little bit. We're gonna now um, kind of um, internally rotate and pronate the, the um, forearm here and flex the fingers, flex the wrist, and then extend the shoulder to, bi to bias the, and, uh, the radial nerve, see the mobility of that nerve. And again, see if there's any symptom reproduction. For the ulnar nerve, uh, we will bias that or, or do the ulnar nerve tension testing. We're going to kind of have them Again, depress the scapula a little bit and then pronate their arm and bend it up to their, to their um, head there. And then Tunnell's test is another, uh, another test that we can do where we're just taking our fingers and we're firmly tapping over the entrapment sites that we talked about earlier. If that tapping reproduces symptoms, then that would also be a positive test. And if you're over the entrapment sites in the thoracic outlet, then that could indicate potentially a thoracic outlet syndrome is, is um, what's going on. And then we have the Syriac's release test. So for this one, we're gonna bring passively, elevate the arm to about 80 degrees, and we're gonna stand behind the patient and kind of lean them backwards while keeping their arm in one position. So that will cause a protraction to their scapula. 
and we're going to hold this position for three minutes. Uh, again, any symptom reproduction that occurs would indicate a positive test for neurogenic TOS.